Welcome back to Door to Door Season 1 for NASCAR 2019, the first race of the season here for the Daytona 150. This is no longer a test session. This is no longer tire testing. No more shadow boxing. This is the real deal. We're going to see who's got what in this first race, who are going to be the main contenders for the 2019 championship with all of the dramatic changes in rules, in cars, in points, everything to come. We're going to find out what's what here in this race on the two and a half mile high banks of Daytona International Speedway. And we're going to lead off with one of the fastest cars in practice, particularly over a long run, was the four car of Kevin Harvick who was very, very happy with the pace over the long run and the way he was bonding well with his teammate. It must be said that all of the Ford Mustangs were, were working really well in the draft here at Daytona. The, the Roush cars and the Pinsky cars were, were up there just as fast as the Stuart Haas entries. Although that being said, the Roush cars did clearly have a bit of an edge in qualifying. Moving on now to the one car entry. A new driver transfer for Chip Ganassi Racing for the 2019 season is the one car of Kurt Busch. You can see him here working with the 31 car and the 9 car of Chase Elliott here in practice. Bonding well, bringing a good positive attitude here in practice. So he's excited about, about the new prospects for the season and hopes to be a contender for the championship itself. Other cars that that were fast, the last year's champion, the 22 of Joey Logano. Beautiful shot there of the cars. One of the big stories we have to talk about in in the practice sessions for the first race at Daytona is the seven-day entry of Tim Tinnery with AJ Foyt Racing. As I said before, they have two drivers. Tim will be doing most of the ovals. John Vining will be doing most of the road courses. So obviously we have Tim at the wheel. As you can see him aggressively drafting with the 14 and the 48. The car had major arrow, arrow loose issues in practice. As you can see here, the big talking point, he gets sideways and collects Jimmy Johnson, and then the, the 24 of William Byron sliding into the infield. Johnson got out unscathed, kept going. William Byron is able to make it into the pits, and amazingly, Tim is able to keep it on the black stuff and goes behind the wall to check the car. The team confirmed there was actually little to no damage. The suspension cash to camber toe was all on point. Very, very lucky escape for that team, especially considering they're, they're new. They probably don't have many spare parts right now. Certainly not many uh, not many chassis to afford to throw away right now. So, so things like that will definitely make the crew chiefs and the engineers lose their hair instantly overnight. I digress. We're going to move on now to the two car of Bad Brad. Brad Keselowski drafting with Matt DiBenedetto, as we can see here. And clearly outrunning everybody to be honest the Ford Mustangs have been walking over everybody in practice it's been all it's just been almost a joke they seem to have a low downforce situation or something because they they're able to unlock speed at times that others simply are as I said Ricky Stenhouse Jr. is one of the people to expect to get pole position in this race along with Brad Keselow and that is a wrap for practice for the first race of the season we could talk about it all day, but at some point, we need to see cars wheel to wheel at 200 miles an hour. We need to see high speed drama, and let's start that off right now by going trackside to pit road to hear the command to start the engines for the Daytona 150. Drivers, start your engines! What a fantastic sound to hear thousands of horsepower burst into life all at the same time. As we see the field begin to make their way onto the racetrack for their pace lap before they start the 150 mile sprint to glory at Daytona. Let's do a brief rundown of the field. We have Alex Bowman snatching pole for Hendrick Motorsports two years in a row. Very, very surprising. And then on the outside, we have the 41 car of Daniel Suarez keeping his speed from preseason testing, wasting no time putting the Stuart Haas entry on the front row. Let's now talk about the 78 of Tim Tinnery with AJ Foyt Racing, who qualified well, as high as 13th, in fact, is having to drop to the back for unapproved adjustments after qualifying. Clearly, no doubt the team is trying to be secretive 
they were they did not tell us what exactly those were clearly something that did make the car fast for qualifying but might have compromised their race such as you know excess camber or maybe a little bit low drag or something like that but now we can see the field is lined up beautifully two by two this is what the fans paid to see this is why we love racing we're about to see 40 cars go absolutely wheel to wheel as the Dodge Challenger pace car will now peel its way towards pit road any moment now and we will start the Daytona 150. There it goes, Alex Bowman leading the field to the start of the race, hits the accelerator and we are green, green, green at Daytona. Alex Bowman getting a good start now, getting just a quarter panel or so on the 41 car of Daniel Suarez, trying to pull Willie clear up. Ricky Stowns Jr. is giving him a good draft now. The field is still very close, two by two. Several cars, uh, 37th of Chris Buescher tries to make it three wide briefly, but Alex Bowman does in fact pull towards the front and will take the lead at Daytona. Ricky Stenhouse maintaining second position well. All the cars streaming two by two. You can see people darting and dipping here and there, trying to make it three wide, including the 19th of Martin Truex Jr. Clearly something to prove at Joe Gibbs. Wow, what an elevator drop by Ricky Stenhouse Jr. Almost taking the nose off the 14 of Clint Boyer. About the same thing that he did at Daytona in July just a year ago and wadding up the entire field. That's something he will look to avoid this time around. Completing the first lap, Alex Bowman leading still. Joey Logano making a run for the inside for third position. Boyer saying, nope. That's my space. You cannot have it. And he actually makes a run on the 17 of Stenhouse and is actually going to get it, in fact. He's going he's gonna to take second position. What a move for the Haas driver. That is incredible results. And he's going for the lead now on lap two on the backstretch, side by side with Alex Bowman, getting a push from Joey Logano behind him. And he's going to clear him and take the lead. The first lead change of, of the season. Hundreds and hundreds of overtakes for the lead and for the mid pack as well are to come for this season and Daytona is just the start. Joey Logano now taking second position with help from the Hendrick car of William Byron and Chase Elliott that crossed the start finish line now to complete lap two. Chase Elliott getting a big push from the six car of Ryan Newman. In the seasons past, this hasn't been good hunting grounds for Ryan Newman, but Rocketman appears to be back. Big line of cars, the bottom lane, clearly the dominant of the driver's choice right now, actually. Joey Logano still in the second position, looking to take the lead from the 14 of Clint Boyer side by side now as we go into turn three. Will he take the lead? Still side by side, it's close. They're side drafting. Logano does in fact take the lead. William Byron is gonna take second and Ryan Newman with the Oscar Mayer Wiener Machine is gonna take a third position. We're gonna laugh at that all, all season long, but it's still good to see Newman up there fighting for the win. Another lap complete now. Ryan Newman trying to go up the inside of the 24 of William Byron. Side by side now, Boyer getting arrow loose there. Looks like a little bit. These these high downforce cars are still unstable. These are still drivers. They're still having to, having to work for it. Gorgeous camera shot now of the Martin Truex Jr. 19 machine pushing hard side by side with Ricky Stenhouse Jr. Which lane is gonna prevail? Once again, it looks like it is the bottom lane. And the cars have tires, when the tires are new, as usual at Daytona, it looks like the bottom lane is the place to be. But that's not going to mean these drivers will, will give up. You still got to make, make overtakes and nobody's going to give up the bottom lane. So if you want to do it, it looks like you're going to have to go around the outside and place your bets. Logano still holding the lead, just barely, almost collected the entire field actually by, by deciding to turn hard left on Ryan Newman's nose, but backs out in the last second. Every team will be thanking him for that. You can see the 78 of Tim Tinry fighting hard to stay in the bottom lane, almost getting shuffled out by the 31, but does stay back, fighting hard to move his way up the field. Still side by side now, absolutely nothing to give now. Where else do you see this in the world where, where the drivers are actually averaging over 200 miles an hour over the two and a half mile circuit here at Daytona? And they're just inches apart, not even feet, but mere inches apart and there's just nothing to give. Right now when the tires new, this is gonna work, but I can imagine in a few last time when we start to see some, some fade, there will be some issues. And I can tell you this year, Goodyear has worked to make tires for these sprint races that will be much more difficult and wear much faster to make more excitement for the fans. 
and excitement there is. And you can see Chase Elliott is forced to go three wide up the middle in between Stenhouse and Clint Moyer, something that most drivers would be very nervous about, but the young gun of Elliott is trying to make it happen. Where is he going to go? Where is he going to go? Alex Bowman is pushing him well. He's going to slot in behind the 17 and in front of the 38. Now, now Alex Bowman is shuffled out. There's a big wreck, accident, huge wreck, huge wreck. Several, several cars involved. Many things are happening. Hard wreck for the 95 of Matt DiBenedetto. There's smoke e everywhere. I can't see literally anything. The 11 is wrecked. The double zero is wrecked. 66 is going to go on the hook. Many, many big entries are involved. The 78 of Tim Turner, you can see it making a pit stop. What on earth just happened? We're going to need to see a replay of that. I'm just, frankly, I'm, I'm gobsmacked by what I just saw early on in the race. Several cars got taken out. What happened? Looks like the 38 went up the track, collected Alex Bowman, and then Talladega Knight style, pretty much the entire field got collected. Here's another shot here. Are smacking the wall. The 41, the 2, the 20. The, what hurts here is the, is the 95. Ouch. Hard into the safer barrier. Let's hope all the drivers are okay. And it's just, the wreck's just still happening. It just keeps happening. Let's take another look now. Deep onto the nose of the 48. A little bit of contact there, and this is when it all goes wrong. Oh, that was a hard hit. Oh, I can't get over the 20 car. Eric Jones, hope that kid's okay. That was a big hit. Let's see who manages to escape. Oh, by the by a fingernail. Looks like the 43 is able to make it through. Larson's unscathed. Did, Ty, did Austin Dillon make it through? I'm just not sure. Let's look now. Check out this on board. Oh, oh almost collects Hamlin. Hamlin kills himself, it looks like, on the apron. Whoa, big slide for the 78 of Tim Tinnery. Where did he end up? That's the question. Let's check out the cockpit cam, the helmet cam, to see what happens all over the back bumper of the Loves Machine. Where is it going to happen? It just all happens right on his hood. Side, sideways on the apron, Kyle Busch style at Speed Weeks. Is he going to save it? He has to lock it down hard. Pops a tire there. Pop, you know, he's got flat, he's got flat tires, and it looks like... He's kind of able to make it onto pit road, actually. That's what we saw earlier. Wow, what what a development. His car is okay. Big news for the team. I know the replay now of the 43. Daryl Wallace Jr., where is he going to go? Oh, it's so close. Oh, wow. Oh, it's, he's still having to avoid. What a move. What a move. Oh, that was like days of thunder. There's smoke, but you can drive through it, son. Good job. He needed that. He needed that, let me tell you. Now everybody's coming on the pit road. You can see it looks like Keselowski. Will they throw that car away? I'm not quite sure. As you can see, pretty much the entire field came in to service the cars for the pit stop. And they now lined back up single file to take the green. Eric Almarola out front. We are green now restarting the race. Ryan Blaney ducking out, trying, trying to make moves. We've got Eric Almarola still in the lead. The 72 in second, then the 19 of Martin Truex Jr., the one of Kurt Busch, and the 30 seven of Chris Busher ducking now to the inside of Kurt Busch. He looks like he's going to take that spot very easily. Most says absolutely powers by. Looks like Kurt Busch might have a little bit of a arrow issue after the after that crash. Wow, love a little shot there. The entire field storming pass, getting up to speed. High into third gear, just about snatching fourth right about now. You can see Tim Tinnery in the 78 still at the back, trying to work his way through, making it three wide, very bold, showing why, although he's young, he does belong here in the Premier Series in NASCAR, going going three wide now. Is he just going to be able to stay on? Barely any room, but they are going to make it work. Big scramble, big scramble now, because as I said in the preseason testing clips, there is only points on offer for the top 20 positions. So for, for these midfield teams, 15th through about 30th is going to be absolutely just dog eat dog, especially at Daytona. Those last few positions mean more than life itself because no point is like you might as well not even turn up. 50 points on offer for first position, though. And right now, Joey Logano is the one who's got that. He's holding the lead well now. Martin Truex is on the inside trying to take away from him. Gets a big run into turn one. Holds his nose there well. Go on, son. He's getting it. He's got the push from the 24. Coming out onto the backstretch. The banking fades away. They are absolutely side by side. Nothing giving there. Who's going to win? Gibbs versus Pinsky. Roush, Roush versus TRD. 
still side by side, new tires and shorter distance, surely the 19 is going to clear him, and he is in fact going to take the lead now, but he runs wide coming out of turn four, leaving an opportunity for, for Alex, no, excuse me, not Alex Bowman, William Byron in the 24, taking the inside through the tri-oval, up the inside, side drafting just a little bit, is he going to be able to make it? Yes, he will, getting a nose in front now. This, this top pack, you can see, starting to separate from the rest of the field. Kyle Busch just barely hanging on. You can see the 78 has of Tim Tenry has made extensive progress, storming his way through the field. Looks like he's all the way up into about 15th position or so already. The field very strung out now at this point, so staying on to the coattails of this lead pack is crucial for points paying positions right now. You can see the one car of, of uh, Kurt Busch, excuse me, just about hanging on now. Everybody is fighting for these for these top points. 50 for first, 40 for second, 35 for third is very crucial. Very crucial for, for these front pack is every race matters for this championship. Every single point counts. You can see the way they're fighting. They, the drivers know this very well. Chase Elliott getting shuffled back towards towards the tail end of this main lead pack now as it gets strung out even more. Jimmy Johnson doing a good job of fighting back from, from some early way, early race rows and the practice issues early on. Fighting now, trying to stay in this lead pack. Very strong out now. The 78 Tim Tinnery looks like he was in sort of, he's in sort of no man's land. You can see there, you got you got the top five cars. You got the 10 car, you know, Kyle Busch, Ryan Newman, the eight car. Then about a one second gap to Tim. And then there's a big gap behind him. Very strong out now at this point. Still, still though, there's almost certain to be another caution, another issue to happen in the future. When will it happen? Nobody knows, but right now, everybody's just trying to get in good position for the end result of this race. And Eric Almirola is doing the best job of that right now. Pulls into the pits to service a green flag pit stop, it looks like, as we move forward into this race. Several laps pulling up very nicely for, for, for this pit stop. So it looks like he's going to get the undercut on the rest of the field. He'll be the first person on fresh tires if he likes to do that. Or since it's, since we are so late in the race, he just might do fuel only. I'm not sure. Oh, Tim, Tim pulls in with the rest of this pack and breaks very, very late. Just about pulls it up on the inside. Cuts off Jimmy Johnson in the process. That was a very, very bold pit road entry, it must be said. Doing a great job now. Hopefully nobody gets caught speeding on pit road. That's just an absolute horrid, horrid way to end or win a race, it must be said. Number eight car of Daniel Hemrick drafting well with the nine car. Oh, oh just about caused the wreck here. Side by side. He's on the apron. He's gone. He's spun. Two cars in the wall. This will certainly trigger a caution flag. The 72 and the eight of Daniel Hemrick. And a big wreck. Big wreck. Eight car goes. Spins around. A lot of damage. A lot of carnage. Oh, man. That... What? I'd be dizzy if I was Daniel Hemrick right now. Let me tell you what, that was a hard hit. But as horrible it was for his team, for the fans, it must be said, this is very exciting because now the field is bunched right back up and we're going to come in for the final pit stop of the day. One more chance for the pit crews to show what they've got. Everybody, including their great uncle Marie, is coming into the pits for a little bit of fuel, a little bit of tire, a little bit of adjustment for the final fight for the win. And it's very, very tight. Everybody's trying not to run into each other. 78 elects to take fuel only. Is gonna gain a lot on this pit stop. Past the 17 is gonna emerge just behind the 18 car of Kyle Busch, who just might be the effective race leader. We're not quite sure. We'll find that out soon. We've got the 18, the 78, nine of Chase Elliott, who's, had a, who's been towards the front of the field this entire race. Very, very interesting. Good result for the Hendrick machine. Good result for the Hendrick motor for the 78 also so far. Uh, if you do not know, the 78 does use Hendrick motors along with their Ganassi engines, using their Ganassi alliance, obviously. As we, as we begin the restart now, the 15 of Ross Chastain has the lead. Five cars, one lap down. We're green now. A little bit of a shaky restart for cars behind, and it's just it's it's a complete a complete cluster right now. Who who's in what position? The entire field scrambling. The 11 car is is it looks like Stevie Wonder forgot to put on the back bumper or something. Is you know their mechanics are really scrambling, trying to get that car to finish the race. 15 pulls down, trying to build a little bit of a gap. It looks like he's got a couple car links on the rest of the field. 43 car of Bubba Wallace trying to draft with him. 
There's a, a few strong cars behind them. It looks like Kyle Busch, Tim Tenery, Chase Elliott, Eric Almirola, very fast cars with no damage so far. Kyle Busch ducks down low, giving the 43 a bump. Tim Tenery is on his own, trying to clear the 31, who is a lap down, mind you, and he does well, and he's going for the outside of Kyle Busch towards the end of the first lap after the restart. Rasha Stain is still in the lead, but we're going to go three watch between the 18, 43, and 78. Big run for the 78 right now. Tim is showing why he does belong here. He's a young guy, but he has he still has speed side by side now with the 18, trying, and he's now going to go to the outside of the 15. A lot of energy on, on the bottom lane, but now Chase Elliott is going to go to the high lane, pushing the 78 into the lead of the Daytona 150. Gaining a couple car lengths now. Chase Elliott trying to go around the outside using that big bundle of energy they have to clear Ross Chastain. Is he going to do it? It doesn't look like he's going to be able to. And now the field is closing back up on Tim Tinnery. What are, what are they going to do? Chase Elliott is now side by side trying to take the lead back. Who's going to who's gonna lead the, this lap? Is the 70 going to get get a lap? Let, no, the Chase Elliott just steals it at the end of that line. But that's all right. We still got several laps more to come in this race. Elliott is going to secure the lead. Duck down to the bottom lane. Keep that draft going well. So let's recap. Let's see where we stand. We've got the nine car of Chase Elliott in the lead. 78 of Tim Tinnery in second. Eric Amarola in third. Ross Chastain in fourth. And then from then on, I honestly couldn't tell you because it is so close and the positions are changing so fast. Ryan Blaney is now going to clear Ross Chastain. It must be said it looks like that uh, that back marker entry is holding up the feet a little bit, but nonetheless, a great, great time to see to, to see that car up front. My my potentially get some sponsorship out of that. It'd be great to great to see him finish the season like he started it. Now it looks like Eric Amarola is trying to steal a steal a look up the inside of Tim Terry. Nothing really happening there. We cut away later in the race where Eric Amarola did actually clear him. Stenhouse is looking for a run on the inside. Oh, he just about caused a wreck. A little bit of a wiggle forces his way up the inside of Tim Tenery, and he is actually going to clear him just about there. William Byron pushing him along. It's the top lane versus the bottom lane. Once again, Eric Almarola just playing the game, working top lane, bottom lane, as you do at these plate tracks, keeping that, keeping that mirror busy as ever. It looks like the bottom lane is forming up really nicely. Not too much energy at the top lane right now. We're going to cut away later in the race where Martin Truex Jr. has now emerged in the lead. Everybody has bunched up really, really well. A lot, of, a lot of momentum, a lot of energy, a lot of excitement to come. We're side by side for the lead now. Chase Elliott versus Martin Truex Jr. Great to see th this new entry. Martin Truex moving to Gibbs in the offseason with definitely a chip on his shoulder, something to prove. And he's proving he is here for the championship. He doesn't want to repeat 2018. He wants this to be the championship year for him. He's pushing Chase Elliott just about to the lead. And he almost clears the 12 of Ryan Blaney. The two best friends now are going to go side by side down the back stretch of Daytona with, with laps winding down quickly. You can see the 78, Tim Turner weaving back and forth in the, ba in the back. Maybe the tires starting to go away a little bit or trying to find the lane that they want to use. Chase Elliott now securing the lead at the front of this pack. Kyle Busch is the pioneer on the top on the top lane, trying to get it bunched up to take a stab at the Hendrick car, and then the two super super fast Fords behind behind him. And we've just got about three laps to go when we cross the start finish line here to conclude the Daytona 150. We're still side by side for the lead. Stenhouse versus Chase Elliott. It looks like some people are having to make the make a pit stop just a splash of fuel they miscalculated running a little bit too light that's very very unfortunate three laps to go now Hamlin cuts off the leader big wreck we're, the leaders are wrecking we're gonna have yellow flag but remember we race back to the line now in 2019 we've got more safety so we're racing back to, racing back to the line almost certainly we're not gonna be able to restart so whoever crosses the line first is almost certainly gonna going to win this race and at the moment, the effective leader of the race is the 37 of Chris Buescher. If he can manage to cross the line first, this will be his effective second win in the NASCAR Premier Series. He won a very dramatic Pocono race. Well, what a story it would be if he could win this dramatic Daytona 150. He's going side by side, almost three wide actually, with some more lapped cars. Remember, they are not on the lead lap. 
The field is frozen. Once they cross the line, Chris Buescher is the leader. We've got two laps to go now, and oh my gosh, he almost gets taken out by a very wiggly boy of the one car of Kurt Busch just about hanging on as they're slowing down. Let's take a look at a replay of what happened. And yeah, just clearly the 11 car, Hamlin, cut off Chase Elliott. Absolute scenes now. If you remember from Martinsville when that, when that drama happened, oh, the 78 almost get taken out in that wreck. Oh, uh, here, here's another hood view of Chase Elliott going high, trying to trying to get past the 11 car. It looks like just easy A's, and they come up and just absolutely just no-scope him out of nowhere and just ruins his race, that must be said. Oh, it's just, just terrible. Is he going to save it? No, he, it's just out, so sad. Chase Elliott's race is going so well. The car was bad fast. He lost all of those spots. Almost gets taken out by the car going there, actually. And what's going on now is we're under yellow. No, it looks like Clint Boyer is out of fuel. The one car is having to pit. Eric Amarula is having to pit. Oh, this no, but nobody's got enough fuel to in this race. It looks like even though we're under yellow, and all you have to do is just cruise around, complete the laps, take the checkered flag, and get those points. But but nobody's got enough fuel. So the big question now is, does Chris Busher have enough in the tank? That is the big question. You know. If, if I was a betting man, I, I, I'd say so, but hey, the way this race is going, I have no idea. But it looks like as we cut to the end of the lap, he will have enough in the tank. He's going to come behind the lapped car, the 47 machine, to win the Daytona 150, the first race of the season. The 12, Ryan Blaine finishes the lap down. We've got Ricky Stenhouse Jr. in second position. Tim Tinnery, his first race of the of his NASCAR Premier Series career finishing in third position. What a result to be on the podium after your first race. That's great, but the glory belongs to Chris Busher. What a result. All the turmoil, all the drama, and he was able to come out on top, keep his nose clean. There's not a mark on that car. Look at that. That's so impressive. After dodging Rex left and right. And yeah, look at him celebrating with the donuts. I would be too if I was him. I'd be absolutely over the moon. What a result for what a result for that team. You, you you don't see them at the front too often, but but when they get results like this, they certainly take advantage of them. Doing donuts in respect to the donuts done by Dale Earnhardt Sr. when he won his race. Although it didn't take Chris Buescher nearly as many attempts, showing all the more how impressive this result was for him. Oh, I'm just about out of breath after that race. That was just crazy. That was wild. If that doesn't deserve a like. I don't know what does. That was absolute insanity. So let's take some time now to go over some notable finishing positions for the race. Obviously, big congrats to Busher getting the win. Tim Tinnery for the new AJFR entry in third. Ryan Newman getting a fantastic sixth. Michael McDowell in eighth. Tanner Berryhill in ninth. Kurt Busch rounding up the top ten. Austin Dilling do, doing well in 13th, Reagan in 15th, and Ross Chastain, Cody Ware, Matt Muir, and Daryl Wallace Jr. rounding out the points ping positions. Absolutely fantastic. Now, obviously, not fantastic for everybody. Some people did have very bad results. Obviously, people like Matt DiBenedetto and Brad Keselowski, Daniel Suarez, absolutely, you know, just heartbroken after the end of this race, hoping for better results at a place like Sebring, especially for De Benedetto with, with all of his road course prowess after the winter season. He'll be looking to do much better in the next road course races to come. Moving on now to the team results after the first round for the championship. Roush Fenway Racing really doing well, pulling up an 18 point lead on JTG Doherty Racing. Big result for them, Ryan Newman and Stenhouse working well despite their inner team conflict. Chip Ganassi in third, Hendrick Motorsports at fourth, AJ Foyt Racing rounding out the top five. Very surprising considering, mind you, it is still a single car entry. Other fun anomalies of Stuart Haas all the way down to top 10 right now, just barely in there. Very surprising result. Moving on now to the manufacturers and surprise, surprise, the team, the manufacturer, excuse me, with the most cars has the most points right now. But remember, that's only after one race, 19 more to go, and only the top 20 get points in each race. Toyota has been known to sweep this championship year after year in, in the past, so have faith there will be more excitement to come next week for the Sebring 
125 dropping on the 17th in just a week's time at noon central do enjoy that please tune in consider a like and subscribe and a comment to help make content like this possible as always you can follow us on instagram for additional content and support as always i'm apex hunter i hope you enjoy the rest of your day i'll, I'll see you next time take care bye bye